Okay, so in today's lecture, um, we will discuss about uh, introduction to <coughs> kinetics uh, for uh, rectilinear motion. So uh, before going into this lecture, uh, we will summarize uh, the previous lecture. Uh, so in the previous lecture, we discuss about um, uh, engineering dynamics, and then we uh, discuss about the uh, kinematics and kinetics, uh, the difference between the two. Uh, we also discussed um, uh, Newton's uh, three laws of motion. Uh, then we discussed um, uh, rectilinear motion uh, in which uh, we only concentrate on the kinematics part. So we uh, discussed displacement, velocity, and uh, acceleration. So as you can see in this case, um, that if you consider this point um, uh, at location P and then it moved to uh, P dash, and the displacement here is um, uh, delta S. So in this case, the velocity uh, can be written as uh, uh, ds by dt, which is uh, s dot, and acceleration is uh, dv by dt, which is uh, v dot, and a is again uh, is d square s by dt square, which is s double dot. Uh, and a special case of uh, rectilinear motion is when the uh, acceleration is constant. So if you consider this uh, this case here, that uh, the initial condition here is that at time t equals zero. Uh, the velocity is v naught. The displacement is s naught. The final condition is that um, uh, that at t equal to t, uh, the velocity is v and the displacement is s here. Uh, so if the acceleration is constant, then we can uh, derive these uh, three important equations. And these equations are only applicable when the acceleration is constant between uh, these two points. When the acceleration is not constant, then you will need to go back to these um, uh, original equations and you will no longer be able to use uh, these equations. Okay, then we also discussed um, about uh, curvilinear motion. Uh, so in curvilinear motion, again, we discuss uh, displacements, uh, velocities and accelerations. So now, as you can see um, in this figure here, that uh, a body is moving um, along this uh, orange path. So this is the path of the of the particle here, and the um, at location A, uh, the position vector of the uh, particle is r, and then the particle move from A to A dash. Uh, so this delta r is the uh, displacement of uh, of the particle from A to A dash, and delta s, which you measure along the uh, the path, is what we call is uh, uh, is distance here. And then if you, you add r plus delta r, you will get r plus delta r, which is this vector here, and which is the position vector of uh, uh, a dash. And again, we discussed this in the previous lecture that this o can be uh, any arbitrary point. Uh, uh, and you can, you can change o. Uh, so if you change o, the only uh, vectors that will change is r and r plus delta r, but delta r will remain the same. And then from uh, uh, from here we can calculate the velocity, which is uh, uh, delta r divided by uh, delta t. Uh, and if we take the limit when uh, time is equal to zero, so then we will uh, get the instantaneous velocities. Uh, so in this case, the instantaneous velocity, as you can see in this figure, is uh, tangent to this uh, path. Uh, and at location a dash, again the velocity is tangent uh, to the uh, to the path here. And again, uh, the velocity uh, at A is V. And then we have some change in the velocity, which is delta V. Uh, and then the final velocity is the, uh, is the addition of uh, V and delta V. And as you can see, the uh, velocities are vectors. So we are using the head to tail rule to add these uh, vectors together. Uh, and these are, again, uh, some uh, important equations that you can get. The, so the velocity. Uh, is again dr by dt uh, and again if you look at this equation v is um, bold r is bold uh, so this means that v and r are vectors here but t is uh, not bold so this is uh, this is um, uh, a scalar uh, and again this uh, equation uh, which is v dot uh, or v dash minus v equal delta v so again this is uh, uh, this is a, a vector equation uh, and finally, the acceleration can be written in this form, that dv by dt. And again, acceleration is, uh, is a, a, a vector, velocity is a vector. Uh, so 
then we also discussed about um, uh, that we can represent the uh, curvilinear motion uh, in term of a rectangular uh, coordinate system. So as you can see in this um, uh, in this case here, that R can be split into two components uh, into X and Y. Uh, so X I means that um, uh, is the X component along the I direction. So I is a unit vector in the X direction. And similarly, Y is a unit vector, uh, uh, J is a unit vector along the uh, Y direction. So what we can write here is that R equal X I plus Y J. So we can split uh, R into two components x and y uh, along x and y direction similarly you can split velocity in x and y direction uh, x dot is velocity in x direction y dot is velocity in y direction and similarly acceleration uh, can be split into two components uh, acceleration in x direction x double dot and acceleration in y direction which is uh, y double dot and again we can use uh, these equations here that if you know the components uh, vx and vy you can calculate v by using uh, uh, pythagoras theorem here and you can also calculate this angle between the uh, between the uh, the v uh, and the horizontal so which is uh, vy divided by vx uh, tangent theta and similarly in case of acceleration uh, as you can see in this figure here that we can use the uh, Pythagoras theorem so a x square plus a y square equal a square and from here you can calculate the magnitude of, uh, of the acceleration uh, finally we also discussed um, uh, projectile motion which is also um, uh, a form of uh, curvilinear motion now in projectile motion the acceleration in x direction is uh, zero uh, this is a very important point here and the acceleration in y direction is minus g uh, which is the uh, g in the downward direction and the value of g is always 9.81 uh, so in this case uh, the initial velocity uh, uh, is given the theta is given from here we can calculate uh, the vx naught and vy naught and then because the acceleration is not changing in x direction so this means that the velocity in x direction uh, will remain the same so vx uh, along the projectile will always be equal to vx naught and then we can calculate the uh, the range of the projectile at any time uh, by using this equation we derived these equations previously and obviously we can calculate the uh, the vy uh, at any instant of time by using this equation here and we can calculate the uh, the height of the projectile at any time by using uh, this equation here Okay, so if we uh, come to the uh, today lecture, so in today lecture, uh, we will um, again uh, uh, talk about the uh, kinetics and kinematics, but mainly about uh, uh, about kinetics and its application, obviously. Um, and because kinetics is based on uh, the Newton's second law, so we will um, uh, explain Newton's second law uh, and obviously uh, equation of motion for an accelerating body uh, we will also discuss different type of forces so one is a gravitational force uh, a spring force and a frictional force so how to calculate these forces uh, which you will need for uh, numerical examples and then we will also discuss uh, how to draw the uh, the free body diagram uh, so this is also important to solve numerical examples so if we uh, first try to um, uh, explain the uh, the newton's law uh, again so as we know that the acceleration of a particle is proportional to the uh, to the resultant force acting on it and uh, is in the direction of this force so this is how you can uh, write the newton's second law uh, uh, in case uh, of a diagram here so if you consider this mass m and you apply force on this mass so this mass will accelerate uh, with uh, with some uh, some acceleration uh, a and according to the uh, newton's second law uh, you can always write this in this form so f equal to ma and obviously in this case uh, f is uh, a vector a is a vector and m is scalar here so in case of uh, kinematics, uh, uh, kinematics is the study of motion uh, without reference to the forces which uh, cause that motion. 
so in kinematics we only discuss about the motion uh, as we did in the previous uh, uh, in the previous lecture uh, but in this lecture we will discuss about uh, uh, about kinetics so kinetics relate the action of forces on bodies to the resulting uh, motion so in kinetics we will uh, uh, as you can see in this figure we will combine uh, statics so in statics you normally discuss uh, forces and in kin kinematics you discuss the uh, the motion uh, so if you combine uh, statics uh, and and kinematics you will get kinetics and the main idea of the kinetics is the newton uh, second law as you can uh, uh, see in this case here so f is coming from your statics and a is coming from your kinematics and then this newton second law combine both uh, forces and acceleration together uh, to make uh, to make kinetics so a simple example of kinetics you can uh, see in this uh, figure here uh, that if you consider uh, an aircraft uh, and uh, there are different forces uh, which uh, uh, you can see in this uh, figure here there is a thrust drag and there's a lift and weight uh, and then uh, you can uh, using the uh, kinetics uh, to calculate for example uh, the uh, acceleration uh, of the aircraft you can also calculate the velocity of aircraft and you can also calculate the uh, displacement by using uh, the newton second law okay so are, these are some example uh, of, uh, uh, of the uh, of the application of uh, of kinetics uh, in in real world applications so the first example is uh, is a parachute uh, so in this case, um, you are given the uh, the drag force on the parachute. So with no drag force, uh, how can we determine the acceleration or velocity of the parachutist at uh, any uh, point of time? So if you are given uh, the drag force uh, and you want to calculate the acceleration and velocity of the parachutist uh, during uh, uh, during uh, uh, his flight. So then uh, you can use uh, uh, the kinetics to uh, to calculate the acceleration and velocity now the second example here is the um, a baggage uh, truck so in this case uh, this is a truck and we have two cards here a and b so if you know the uh, uh, the friction force uh, on the driving wheels of the truck so if you know the uh, the the driving force on the uh, on the wheels of the truck so then how can we determine the acceleration on, and velocity of the truck and similarly uh, then uh, can we determine the forces acting on the coupling so if we know the acceleration of the of the truck how can then we calculate the forces on the coupling between the uh, truck and cart b and also uh, how can we calculate the uh, the forces on this coupling between B and C, which obviously you you will need for designing this coupling mechanism, and obviously again uh, we can use the uh, the kinetics uh, to do this job. And again, this is another um, uh, example uh, which is um, goods or cargo lift. So with known uh, weight of the elevator and with known uh, acceleration. Uh, what is the tension in the cable so if you know the the weight of the elevator and if you know the uh, acceleration uh, with which this elevator is moving in the upward direction then how we will calculate the the tension in the cable uh, because you want to make sure that the cable is strong enough uh, so this using kinetics we will be able to calculate uh, this uh, tension in the uh, in the cable here uh, which you will need for the design of the of the cable obviously so now um, we discuss about kinetics, kinematics, uh, and kinetics. Um, so in this case, uh, how you will then solve the uh, the problems in kinetics, uh, the real world problems. So there are different uh, uh, approaches that we can use here. Uh, so the first approach here is direct application of um, uh, Newton's second law, which is F equal to m a and f is vector a is vector here so this is again uh, the direct application of newton second law so we will use uh, uh, the newton second law and we will uh, we will solve the uh, uh, the uh, problem of kinetics uh, and which is what we will do in this uh, uh, in today lectures 
uh, there are different uh, other uh, procedures which you can also use to solve the kinetics problems and one procedure is uh, what we call is the work and energy principle and another one is called is impulse and momentum method which we will discuss in the next uh, uh, two weeks okay so again if we um, try to um, again um, uh, just state the newton's second law so as we know that the acceleration of the particle is proportional to the resultant force acting on it and is in the direction of uh, of this force so we know that uh, this uh, newton's second law f is equal to ma so in this case um, m is obviously what we call is the inertia of the of the particle and which is the resistance to the rate of change of velocity so which is the resultant to the acceleration so if you consider these um, uh, two systems here uh, m1 and m2 and f um, f1 is equal to f2 uh, so force f1 and force f2 are the same and m2 is um, is greater than m1 so then if you want to compare the acceleration uh, so in this case um, we can see that the resistance uh, 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 to to the rate of change of velocity uh, is lower in this case and it's higher in this case this means that in this case the acceleration um, the acceleration will be uh, will be higher uh, than uh, than uh, this case here so then we can say that a uh, one should be greater than a two if this is the case because uh, in uh, in the first case uh, the inertia is um, uh, of the particle is less uh, and in this case the inertia is uh, is high so therefore uh, this body will uh, accelerate uh, faster than this this body here and this is again uh, important uh, point here the acceleration is always in the direction of the of the applied force here uh, so as uh, in case of kinetics uh, you will always need to deal with the uh, with the forces uh, so uh, i'm sure all of uh, most of you may be familiar with the uh, with the unit of the force uh, but just to uh, revise uh, it, uh, so in SI system, which is we will be using only SI system, the unit of force is uh, Newton, uh, and uh, the Newton is derived uh, by Newton's second law, which is uh, uh, this equation here. So in this case, if you say that uh, uh, the Newton is the unit of the of the force, which should be equal to, uh, and the unit of the mass is kilogram. And the unit of uh, acceleration is meter per second square so this means that the uh, the newton is kilogram meter per second square and if you look at this figure here if you consider um, a body of mass one kilogram and if you apply force on this um, mass uh, and the force is uh, equal to one newton this one newton uh, force uh, will produce uh, an acceleration of one meter per second uh, square in this uh, body here and similarly you can also uh, then uh, talk about the uh, gravitational uh, free fall that if you consider uh, a body of mass which is one kilogram uh, and we know that w is equal to mg uh, so in this case uh, uh, because g is 9.81 uh, so then w will become 9.81 uh, newton Okay, so uh, so far we discussed um, uh, a very simple form of uh, Newton's second law, uh, which is uh, F equal m a. But now uh, assume that um, uh, when a particle of mass m is subjected to the action of forces uh, F1, F2, and F3. So now if uh, we have multiple forces, so if you consider this body here, uh, in this case you will just consider a particle. And there may be multiple forces on this uh, this particle of mass m so for example uh, one force is going to be in this direction here uh, which is going to be f1 another force may be coming from this direction here uh, f2 another force may be coming from this direction here uh, and this will be f3 uh, and um, so this uh, in this way if we want to uh, uh, apply the newton's second law here so uh, 
we will first calculate uh, delta f which is the uh, sum of these uh, three forces and then the acceleration will be in the direction of that that force uh, which is going to be in this direction here so again uh, the newton second law in this case we will be written in this form that summation of all the forces equal to ma since instead just just writing f we will write summation of all the forces and this summation is obviously um, uh, a vector summation because force is uh, is vector so when applying a newton second law to solve problem we usually express it in scalar component form uh, with the use of the coordinate system so obviously we can split the uh, forces in x and y component um, so it will just make our life easier and then the choice of an appropriate coordinate system depend on the type of motion involved so we will choose the coordinate system which um, uh, will help us to uh, simplify the problem